Why are Japanese cars so reliable? It's not a myth, they really are some of the most dependable cars in the entire world. Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you why and show you what this has to do with some of the most legendary tuned cars of all time. Anyway, I'm Matt Watson, and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Everyone wants their car to be reliable. It doesn't matter if you're doing the school run in a Tiguan or cruising in your Bugatti. Breakdowns are embarrassing, annoying, frustrating, uh, the list goes on. Anyhow, which country should you buy your next car from if you want it to be as reliable as possible? Well, a recent report by WarrantyWise found that five out of the 10 most reliable car brands in the UK all came from the same country. And that country was, of course, Japan, because the manufacturers that ranked so highly were Suzuki, Isuzu, Toyota, Lexus, and Honda. In fact, the most reliable car in the entire survey was an older Lexus RX. But why do Japanese manufacturers find it easier to make reliable cars and everyone else seems to struggle? Well, one of the reasons goes back to before World War II. In the 1930s, many Japanese companies were making cars inspired by Western models, like this Toyota AA from the 1930s. Hmm. But very few people in Japan could afford to buy a car back then. So the government passed the 1936 Automobile Manufacturing Industry Law to try to reduce competition from foreign companies and boost Japanese car production. This meant Japanese car makers didn't have to build Western style cars to compete with brands like Ford, GM and Chrysler. Instead, they could make cars specifically for Japanese drivers that were cheaper to build and cheaper to maintain. Okay, so this wasn't a new idea. Lots of other brands have built cheap, simple cars before, like the Ford Model T and the original Volkswagen Beetle, plus of course, the Citroen 2CV. But Japan took this a step further. In 1949, it introduced a set of rules that let you get cheap tax and insurance if your car was less than a certain size and had a very small engine. These tiny cars were called K cars, which is Japanese for light automobile. And I mean really light. The first K cars had tiny 360cc engines. That's smaller than the engines in most modern motorbikes. Japan did relax the rules later on though, so engines grew to 550cc in 1976, then again to a whopping 660cc in 1990. Things changed a bit in 2014 when the government raised the taxes on K cars, but they had become such a big part of Japanese car culture that they were still selling really well. In fact, seven of the 10 best selling new cars in Japan in 2018 were K cars. They were so popular that a few Western brands, including Caterham, sold K car versions of their cars in Japan. But what's this got to do with reliability? Well, the whole point of a K car is that it's cheap to buy and cheap to run and cheap to maintain. And reliability plays a big part in being cheap to maintain. After all, it costs you cash when your car breaks down because you have to pay to get it fixed. So Japanese manufacturers made sure their K cars were really reliable so you could avoid expensive repair bills. But that's only part of the story. Japan has some of the best public transport in the world, especially in big cities like Tokyo. So you have to have a really good reason to own a car if you live somewhere like that. Maybe you can't walk down hundreds of steps to get to the subway, or you need your car to make deliveries. Either way, it would be a massive pain if your car was unreliable and kept breaking down. So reliability has been a key selling point for Japanese brands for years. But there's another reason why these cars are reliable, and it's to do with the factories that build them. Take Toyota, for example. It built almost 10 million cars last year. That's one every three seconds. Every three seconds seconds. But before it puts a new car into production, it builds one completely by hand. I mean every single piece from the first bit of metal to sticking the badge on at the end, every last bit. The engineers only figure out how to automate the production line when they're happy with every single part of the process. This is part of Toyota's K-Zen strategy, which means continuous improvement. And when you put this much attention to detail into every single part, you can usually spot issues that might show up a bit later on. But Toyota has another process called Jidoka, which loosely translates as automation with a human touch. It's a bit like having a human babysitting all the factory robots watching what they're doing. And this person can stop the production line if they spot an issue with any car. 
This can cause delays at first, but it's better to stop the factory once to fix one car and the process rather than build loads of cars with the same issue. Anyway, this attention to detail means it takes longer and usually costs more for Toyota to put a car into mass production. But Toyota has a trick up its sleeve to help it save some cash. It reuses as many components as it can in lots of different cars. I'm talking about the engines, the gearboxes, the infotainment systems, almost everything. So it's no surprise that Toyota and Lexus, which obviously Toyota owns, make loads of really reliable cars. This is also the reason why Toyota doesn't build many limited run cars. I'm talking about super exclusive versions of existing models like the Mercedes-MG Black Series and so on and so forth. If Toyota wanted to make a car like this, it would have to put every single new part through the same complicated production scrutiny as a piece designed for 10 million mass-produced cars. And you can imagine how much all that would cost. Well, Toyota has built a car like this once. It was the Lexus LFA. Toyota knew it was only going to make 500 of these V10 GT cars, but it still put just as much time and effort to make sure that car was as reliable as a Corolla. This was one of the reasons why the LFA was really, really expensive. It cost nearly £350,000 back in 2010. That doesn't sound too crazy by today's standards, but it was almost five times the price of a brand new Nissan GTR. The LFA was an amazing car though, especially its awesome naturally aspirated engine, which was built by Yamaha. Now, if you wanna hear what that car actually sounds like, I'm gonna put a link up there, popping out in the top right hand corner of the screen. You can watch me drag race an LFA against another Japanese sports car. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, you just have to watch the video to find out. There's a link in the description below. Now, there is another side to all this and it's much cooler than reliability. When you over engineer a car like this to make it super reliable, you also make it really strong. This is one of the reasons why the Toyota Hilux and the Toyota Land Cruiser have a reputation for being absolutely indestructible. But it also means that Toyota's engines can be tuned to make masses more power than standard without that much chance of them being overstressed and braking. Take the Mark IV Supra, for example. That car's three liter straight six engine had only about 320 horsepower as standard, but plenty of tuners have boosted the legendary 2JZ to more than 1,000 horsepower. Now, I've actually driven a 1,000 horsepower Supra and it blew my mind. Super scary. Oh, Christ! It's a 20-year-old car with as much power as a Bugatti Veyron. So, there you have it. The reason why the Toyota Corolla probably won't break down on the school run is also the same reason why you can tune an old Supra to have more power than a modern hypercar. Anyway, I've actually found a great deal on one of my favorite Japanese cars through Carwo. I'm gonna put a link popping out in the top right hand corner of the screen. Click on that, you can check out what the car is and the offer. However, if you're not looking to buy a new car, but you are looking to sell a car, also follow that link because we are offering a new service where you can input the details of your car you're trying to sell, upload some photos, and you'll get offers back on it from our trusted dealers. And you can choose whether or not you want to sell the car to them. They'll get you a great price. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Also, let me know if any other videos you'd like me to do in the comments below. If you click there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can actually sign up to the Car Wow newsletter, where we'll keep you up to date of all the latest news and reviews from the car world in between these video uploads. So just click on that, sign up, it's completely free. And of course, you can cancel anytime you want to. Thanks for watching. See you next time.